This is a frozen piece of ceramic that can levitate. It can do that because it moves electricity with no loss of energy. This is what is currently used to make MRI machines and those levitating trains in Japan. You've seen superconductors, but all the ones you've seen need to be cooled down to near absolute zero. Heck, an MRI is basically a huge bath of liquid helium with some cables in it. But look at this guy. No cooling, no pressure chamber, no nothing. And it still floats? A superconductor that works at room temperature would be a huge deal. Just replacing the grid in America with superconductors would save the equivalent of the power of all these countries combined four times over. It could make computers orders of magnitude faster. The CPU wouldn't heat up anymore. You thought AI was crazy? Imagine if we had 10 times the computing power, how much faster it would learn. Even better, the process for making this material is so simple, you could make it with $200 worth of equipment in your backyard. So, it can be real, right? This isn't the first time someone made the claim to room temperature superconductors. There's a bunch of drama around this. People saying it's not reproducible, it's just a diamagnetic material. So what's going on here? Let's start with, what's a superconductor? Take a piece of copper and plug it in. As expected, it turns bright red and ends up melting. We can see why if we zoom in on it. Imagine flowing electricity like a bunch of electrons doing parkour around the atoms. Problem is, the atoms are also dancing the salsa like their name entails. So as expected, the electrons bump into the atoms, which not only makes them move slower, but also makes the atom jiggle around faster. And that's the very definition of temperature, it's how fast the atom jiggle. That's why you see the copper heating up. They call that electrical resistance. The material resists the flow of electrons. That's a lot of wasted energy that could be used to power something. Some smart scientists were looking at this and figured, if the problem is the heat, let's stick the cable in a freezer. And nothing happened. They built better and better freezers that can go to crazy low temperature thanks to liquid helium. And still nothing, the copper melts like always. Turns out copper just cannot be turned into a superconductor. But one day in 1911, this guy comes around and starts throwing a bunch of different stuff in the Giga Freezer. When he put mercury in it is when everything changed. Somehow dumping mercury in a bath of liquid helium made it turn French. The electricity was passing through without any resistance. No energy loss. Like literally, you can plug in the mercury, unplug it, come back two years later, hook it up and it'll still have the electricity in it. As long as you kept it cold the whole time of course. Which is exactly the problem we have today. Since then people found various alloys that can become superconductors but they're always either very cold or very high pressure. It's like picking between two of your exes. Kinda of makes sense, if your goal is to make electrons slide through the material without bumping anything, you either freeze the atoms so they form a nice key track, or you squeeze them together really hard so they don't have room to jiggle. But there is another way. If we were really good at arranging atoms, we could create a material that naturally forms the tracks for the electrons just from its structure, meaning no freezer or pressure chamber needed. That's where this guy comes in. A Korean lab recently published a not yet peer-reviewed paper explaining how they created the first ever room temperature superconductor. Sounds fun, but not yet peer-reviewed means, as far as we know, ChatGPT could have made it up and they just published it. That's why so many people are holding back until we know for sure that it's reproducible and actually a superconductor. Because it could also just be a diamagnetic material like water and not a full superconductor. See, when you put a magnet next to water, it does repel it just a tiny bit. Even though water is clearly not magnetic like steel, this is what they call diamagnetism. Some material just have their atoms and electrons arranged in such a way that putting them next to a magnet turns them into a tiny magnet just for a moment. Which means the magnetic field, instead of completely passing through the water, gets pushed out a little bit. With the right arrangement and strength of magnets, you can even make your diamagnetic material levitate. And since water is diamagnetic, you can theoretically levitate yourself. Or more practically, this small frog. So now you can understand how this can look an awful lot like diamagnetic levitation. And even trickier, one of the properties of superconductors is that they're perfect diamagnets. Their lack of resistance makes it completely repel magnetic fields. That's how they levitate so easily. That's how the floating trains in Japan are made. So now we're like, is this a really good diamagnet or is it a full-on superconductor? So far, we don't know. The team behind it seems pretty confident. Maybe it will change the world, maybe it'll just be another piece of internet history. I'll keep you updated. You know what else we don't know? How to stop AI from taking over the world. Maybe you should understand how AI works before that happens, huh? Lucky for you, I have a video on that right here.